must never stop asking ourselves this question. Is Trifus free? On Human Rights Day, we invite you to answer this question together and also find out why this is an important question to ask. Welcome to the House of European History and to our exhibition, Fake for Real, a history of forgery and falsification. In this exhibition, we explore the fakes and forgeries that have shaped European history. I am Simina Badika, I am a curator for the House of European History and for the last three years I have been working to bring into the exhibition space the most exciting objects, among others, related to the Dreyfus Affair. The Dreyfus Affair was an internationally infamous case of using forged evidence, fake testimonies, to convict an innocent man. In 1894, a document was found offering to sell French military secrets to the Germans. The crime could not go unpunished, there was a spy in the French army. A case was hastily built against Captain Alfred Dreyfus. He was the only Jewish officer on the French army's general staff. Based on forged documents on a secret dossier, Captain Dreyfus was found guilty. He was condemned to permanent deportation, military degradation and treason. Despite the lack of evidence, the investigators on the case were so convinced that Dreyfus was guilty, they went as far as to produce forged documents in order to convince the military court. This little piece of paper remained in history under the name the fake Henri, after the name of the officer who had forged it. If we look closely at it, we can see how he actually did it. He put together little pieces of authentic documents into which he inserted another one with Dreyfus's name on it. The handwriting of the supposed spy was also analyzed and because it did not resemble Dreyfus's handwriting, what we can see in this contemporary image is the expert Alphonse Bertillon convincing the court that Dreyfus had faked his own handwriting. France was increasingly anti-Semitic at the time and this is one of the main reasons why Dreyfus was picked up as the only possible suspect. But soon enough, Dreyfus and his family found themselves surrounded by a group of people who wanted to see justice done. Among them, the French writer Emile Zola relaunched the Dreyfus Affair by publishing this piece of journalism in which he directly accused the military investigators of faking evidence. It took 12 years for Dreyfus to be declared innocent. To better defend him, the League for Human Rights was established in France. Its goals were the principles of justice, liberty, equality, fraternity, as laid out in the Declaration of the Rights of Man from 1789. If we look closely at this early flag of the League of Human Rights, we can see that the name itself has changed. What we refer to as the rights of man at the beginning of the 20th century, we now call human rights. This is to show that human rights are something that we are still redefining and thinking of still today. An anecdote of the time tells that during the Dreyfus affair, an explorer was caught in polar ice. When he was finally rescued, his first question was, is Dreyfus free? Now, this is a question that testifies to the international fame of the affair, but it is also a question that we can keep asking ourselves. Are there still people around the world who are being accused and mistreated not because of what they did, but because of who they are? Are there people still being denied of their right of a free trial? This is a question that we must keep asking ourselves. Is Trifus free?